the question is, what time is it? And the underlying questions that the four panelists are designed to help pose that we'll then go into small group to discuss are, how close are we to actual economic and ecological collapse? Not crisis, collapse. How close are we to an actual fascist takeover of the nation state of the United States of America? How close is it to an actual fascist international? Because fascism is emerging all across the globe. What can we do to address these issues? Does our practice correspond with our analysis? And how can we bring our practice and analysis into alignment? That's what we're tasked to do. As the opening, my, I am tasked with now in what, about 12 minutes to give a broad overview of what I just said. And I'm gonna, my specific task is fascism and its legal phase. All right, so here is the short, which I think I can take into any pool hall or bowling alley or other place where ordinary folk gather together to try to explain what the fuck is actually happening. And it, I would use a little bit different language depending on the audience, but here's the concept that I would try to do. And it goes like this. The reason that we are in this state is because there are th three interrelated crises that are coming together. The first is ecological collapse globally. It's not coming, it's beginning and going to get worse. Let's note and observe that human beings have faced eco ecosystem collapse of their bioregions. There's much to learn from what they did then, but what is unique in this historic moment, this is a global ecological collapse. Every other time there's been a collapse because of imperial overshoot because of ecological and weather catastrophes, whatever it is, the bottom line, human beings always basically fled the capital of empire uh, and went off into the savannas or the forests or the mountains or whatever, right? Uh, continue to take care of themselves. My point is, my assessment, there's no place to go. Like, so we've actually got to get rooted in place and make sure that we can take care of ourselves and where is Edgit to love each other, to protect each other and take care of each other where we are as the ecological collapse begins. But wait, there's more because there is an economic crisis. And to be clear, this economic crisis is, everybody in this circle understands, is capitalism, right? It cannot be uh, reformed. It cannot be amended. Capitalism is, a, is an economic system fundamentally based on extraction, oppression, a power over dynamic. You can't reform that shit, right? But that's what we're living in, so what do we do? Why is capitalism in crisis? There's two related reasons. Number one, because the industrialism and this level is literally commodifying Mother Earth faster than she can replenish herself. Like, it's coming to an end. That's existential. But there's also 2B of the ecological crisis, which is the crisis of capitalism, because even if there was some miracle technological fix, which I am not arguing is gonna happen, in fact, I'll fight you if you think that it will, metaphorically, intellectually, but, but even if you believe that, oh, but maybe some technological fix is gonna bring us out of this, right? I would say, yeah, but you know what? Capitalism as practiced is going to end because the entire capitalist uh, 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 system is designed on extracting the surplus value of labor, right? That's literally how the system works. So if I am the capitalist and I own the means of production, I pr come out to work. Why? To extract the surplus value of labor. I put Cade to work if possible. Why? To extract the surplus value of labor. I put Trevor to work. Can you guess? To extract the surplus value of labor. Thank you. Here's the point with automation, technology, robotics, that actually is not gonna work anymore. So capitalism is in crisis as a system, even for the capitalist, even for the ruling class. One of the things that I'm trying to really underscore here is in this moment of crisis, this crisis is happening everywhere and there are fissures even within the ruling class. We've got lots to talk about, but the, the ecological crisis, the economic crisis, that's what's creating this political crisis. This political crisis, in an essence, is the system cannot do what it's designed to do. 
And to be clear, this political system was never designed to address white supremacy or heteropatriarchy or, or even just fundamental fairness, right? I'm saying something different. I'm saying this system can't maintain order. Like it can't do what it's supposed to do, which is to facilitate how it actually, how the whole thing happens. So we are in, with a hat tip to Antonio Gramsci, a conjuncture. A huge conjuncture, what, the likes of which nobody has ever actually faced before. So we have an ecological crisis, an economic crisis coming together to create a political crisis. And that political crisis is the emergence of fascism as a way to address it, right? Fascism emerged in the 1930s. Why? Big picture, because basically agrarian society and the entire global north was basically being restructured to move and morph into an industrial society, right? For Marxism 101, social reproduction. How does the system replicate itself? And, and, and Kate, I know it's going to go deeper on this, but it's not just, it, it includes absolutely how the system does the production and distribution of goods and services and the, like the objective material things, but it's also much deeper. It's gender relations. It's power structures. It's the whole fucking thing. How does society recreate itself and normalize itself, right? Fascism is not merely jackbooted thugs and totalitarianism. That is absolutely part of it. But, you know, it is something deeper. It is how to organize all of society. And a hat tip to Mel Figueroa, because when I did this, I used to sort of do the checklist, like here are the definitions of fascism and then sort of check them off. And like, and then at the end, everybody's supposed to go, oh shit, we're in fascism. Mel convinced me that's really not the way to approach this. The way to approach it is to understand fascism is not merely totalitarianism. It actually requires a social base to actually do this self-replication and the social reproduction. Doesn't take a majority, but it takes, let's say 30, Say it again. Enough people doing nothing. Enough people doing nothing, but also enough of the brown shirts to be doing something. Yeah. Right? So he, mass. say it again. A critical mass. A critical mass. So my point is that fascism is rising now because we are moving from an industrial society to a data uh, attention as capital like read the age of surveillance capitalism if you're actually getting any sleep at night and you, you want to make sure to stay terrified constantly. I'm just saying I understand industrial capitalism. I understand finance capitalism. I still haven't really grappled and come to terms with whatever this restructuring actually is. But I can tell you what it means is they're going to kill all of us. And I, I want to like really like this is not merely an intellectual thing. I am absolutely about organic intellectualism and, and each one teach one. But I'm also crystal clear. This is a fight for our lives. Like because what the plan is does not actually include us. So next I'm going to shift into. All right. So fascism itself. I get how am I doing on time? You have about seven, eight minutes. Maybe. Thank you. So, very quickly, I am arguing, positing, I'm asserting that as horrific as settler colonialism, white supremacy, heteropatriarchy has always been, and in this country, we are entering into a qualitatively different phase, right? Like, like uh, I, I, this is not like, oh, back in the good old days, like, it was never the good old days. I'm saying something different. I'm saying we are about to see actual brown shirts in this country. In fact, did anybody hear Bannon's like just, what, 48 hours ago? 4,000 what? Shock troops. Literally a call for 4,000 shock troops. That's brown shirts, y'all. Like that's a public call. And... So the January 6th insurrection, on the one hand, is comical, right? It's like, aha, they think that actually you take over a building and somehow you've taken over the instruments of, of power. So on the one hand, haha, they're idiots. On the other hand, oh my God. Like, that's never happened, right? 
And what you have is the, like, this current Republican Party are something different. They are actually embracing fascism as a political economic ideology, and they are normalizing that. That is profoundly dangerous in a way that hasn't been before. And to be blunt, the vapid response of the neoliberal Democratic Party leadership, which clearly is gonna be, go out and vote. And if you already vote, vote harder. <laughs> right, and again, like for those of you who were here yesterday, I don't believe in electoral fetishism, right? I don't believe that we can get to the world that I wanna live in by voting alone, but it is a front of struggle. So we've got to think about how do we think about this historic moment as we see forces that are going to overwhelm the whole thing. So here's the thing that I, in, the, in my last bit of time, again, like I am not a rah-rah Democratic Party. I think that what we have to understand is this Supreme Court with its decision on Roe versus Wade, Citizens United, basically taking corporate constitutional rights to a level that we've never seen before, the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Brune, the, like in the midst of a rash of mass shootings to actually roll back uh, gun control laws, uh, Kennedy versus Bremerton, which is a further dissolution of the separation of church and state, and then West versus EPA that didn't get nearly the attention it deserved, literally stripping the EPA from some of its flimsy ability to try to curtail uh, the climate chaos and catastrophe that's coming. What we're seeing is what, what the academics call the legal phase of fascism, where they are codifying the control and creating a one-party rule. Now, I believe actually the nation state as we understand it is, uh, is likely not to survive this next epoch. On the one hand, yay that. On the other hand, gulag's bad. And so my point is this. How do we get build a genuine movement that can unite ordinary people in a united front against fascism from below, ordinary people being able to basically have this conversation in pool halls and bowling alleys so that we're building the folks and that building the solidarity across uh, sectors and across different folks to actually come up without allowing the Democratic Party to say, we're the defenders of democracy. And that all those conversations happening in those pool halls and bowling alleys, it means get out and vote and mobilize people to vote. So the difference between a united front and a popular front. I am not here to defend the pretense of bourgeois democracy in this country. It's never been democracy. Uh, it, 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 it is not capable, this current system. But in this moment of fascism, a united front that actually has the courage to talk about the interconnectedness between white supremacy, settler colonialism, heteropatriarchy, and capitalism as the interconnected power over dominator extractive systems that is going to kill us all or actual fascism. And I, to, to paraphrase Rosa Luxemburg, who famously said, Socialism or barbarism. I say it's actually fascism or eco-socialism. We are in a which side are you on moment. I don't think that, I don't see any way that like it doesn't ultimately go one way or the other. I'm gonna conclude with this quote, one that, yeah, how about that? Like I've done this before, has it? I'm gonna conclude with a quote from Ernest Hemingway in For Whom the Bell Tolls. How about that? I see your expression, Helen. <laughs> you say there are not many fascists in your country. Well, there are many who do not know they are fascists yet, but they will find it out when the time comes. Comrades, our work is to help people understand eco-socialism is where the fun and the play and the joy and the life and the love is, and fuck those fascists. <laughs>